Today we are going to talk about two issues with the integumentary system or the skin system and that is burns and cancer. And so what we're going to talk about first, we're going to talk about burns. Burns are classified based on their severity. First degree is the least dangerous. Third degree is the most dangerous. But we're going to talk specifically about today is what we are looking for with those different kinds of burns. So first of all, if it's a superficial burn, that means like towards the top of the skin, usually that is a first degree burn. If we're dealing with the full thickness of the skin and it gets down into the dermal layer and even into, let's say, the fat area of the skin, then we're going to deal with third degree burn. And so if we look at some examples of these, um, the first degree burn is what we have most common with, let's say, uh, touching a hot pan or touching a hot surface. And we don't think of this, but also sunburn. It's literally a type of burn on our skin from the heat and the uh, ultraviolet rays that have hit the skin. And so what we see with first degree burns and how they're classified is that the skin gets red. That's kind of the definition of a first degree burn is redness of skin. And so what you're doing is you're damaging specifically the epidermis of the skin. The second degree burn, the key that you're looking for there is you're looking for blistering. Now, in some cases, you can have blistering with sunburn, but hopefully it doesn't come to that point. But this is what we would see with, let's say, if there was some issue with like a fire or maybe an acid burn. Um, and when we talk about burns, it doesn't always have to be fire. It can be from acids or high uh, basic materials. But regardless, a second degree burn, you are damaging not only the epidermis, but also the dermal layer of the skin. And that's what you're seeing with those blistering. Um, the blister is filled with a fluid that is actually there to protect and to not get infection. Um, and so that's a, a body's response to fight off infection if and when a burn does take place. And then the third picture that you're seeing there, that's actually a, a fake picture, um, that is where you're basically scorching the skin. You are charring the skin. And so this can include the epidermis, definitely the dermal layer, and then also even can get into the hypodermis or where the fat actually is um, on the skin. And so obviously these are the most dangerous types of burns that can take place. Here's just another visual to kind of describe the different burns and what we are looking for. So the top left picture there is showing you some normal skin. The first degree burn, you're seeing some redness there in the epidermis of the skin. You also might have hair that gets singed in that example. The second degree burn, you're seeing some redness in the epidermis for sure, but then also into that dermal layer. And then unfortunately with that third degree burn, you're seeing the basically the complete burning of the epidermis, most of the dermal layer, and then it can get into the hypodermis, which again is kind of the fancy word for the fat tissue. And you're really seeing the charred skin that can be taking uh, place in that kind of burn. The next uh, topic that we want to talk about with our integumentary system is skin cancer. So skin cancer is one of the most common types of cancers we have worldwide. Um, we see it more common in different races and ethnicities, but also in locations on earth. So if you think about it, do you think people that have skin cancer, it's more likely that they're around the equator or near the poles? Hopefully you said the equator. Why? There's more sunlight and it is more powerful. Um, that's not to say that, you know, people in the poles can't get skin cancer because they definitely can. They're just not as likely because there's literally less sunlight and some of the sunlight that they get is not nearly as powerful all the time. So what I want to introduce and have you guys know for this is the A, B, C's, D's, and E's of detecting skin cancer. So a lot of us have moles or freckles, and remember that a mole or a freckle, that is just the area on our body that might have increased the amount of melanin that was produced in that area, making it appear darker. And so what we're looking for with a mole or a freckle is we want it to be symmetrical. We want it to be like an oval. We want it to be like a circle. And asymmetry means that it's got somewhat of an irregular shape. And so if we're seeing with these A, B, C's, D's, and E's, this is what you like don't want to have. So if you have a molar freckle that is asymmetric, that sometimes can mean the 
perhaps uh, the start of melanoma, also known as skin cancer. We want the border to be defined. We want it to be kind of like how we would draw a shape. We don't want it to have the ridges or the bumps that you're seeing here in the diagram. Instead, we want it to be more circular. We want the color to be uniform. We don't want it to have a bunch of different colors and we don't want it to have uh, multiple colors within the same freckle. That can be an indicator as well. The diameter, six millimeters. Now, what the heck does that mean? Um, the best way to think of it is we want a lot of our moles or freckles to be about the size of a pencil eraser or smaller. Anything bigger than that, again, is an indicator. Now, before I make you guys panic, um, you got to understand that just because you have one of these or two of these, it doesn't mean they have skin cancer. Instead, it's maybe something that you just want to take a look at, and that kind of brings us to letter E with the evolving. If it continues to change in size or change in shape or change in color, that's something that you probably will want to get checked out. If you have a mole that's been there for your whole life and it hasn't changed, you're probably okay. If you have a freckle that, let's say, is, is maybe getting a little bit darker over time, over a long period of time, that's probably okay. But if you're seeing these changes happen in short periods of time, sometimes that is an indicator to go and get yourself checked out. So now let's look at actual pictures of people with skin cancers. And so if we look at them and go through our A, B, C's, D's, and E's, let's look at this first one. So here we're seeing that the border is kind of ill-defined. We're seeing that it's got different colors. If I took a pencil eraser to that, it's probably going to be bigger. We're seeing also that it's raised. In the second picture, we're definitely seeing some different coloration. We're seeing redness around it. We're seeing some darkened spots in the middle. Um, that'd be something that we might want to take a look at. And then finally, if we look at the bottom picture, we're seeing a color that might be a concern for us. The border there is okay. The size is probably right on the edge, but because of the darkness and how it's raised, that might be an in indicator uh, possibly of skin cancer. And just with any type of medical issue, it's always good to err on the side of caution, get stuff checked out, um, and try to figure out, you know, is it something that is um, skin cancer or is it, you know, an issue or is it not? And again, it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to check more early than uh, before it's too late. That concludes our discussion on burns and skin cancer.